All right, we're back with this Husqvarna again. This is the one that in the previous video was shooting flames out of the carburetor and the backfiring out the muffler. Uh, since then, in that video, I put a coil on it, and that seemed to help. I did start it after I did that a few days later, and it seemed to run okay. It was still surging a little bit and uh, still popping a little bit, but nothing crazy like the first time. So today we're going to check the valve clearance on this and uh and hopefully that's that's off a little bit that we can make an improvement i'm not really going to mess with the carburetor i don't have time this is going to be leaving me pretty soon here but i wanted to get into checking these valves because that valve cover has been off before and somebody did kind of a sloppy job putting it back on so let's start taking that apart and see what we get spark plug wire out of the way here so everybody can see better there we go The oil is nice and clean. No dirt there. Like it was just changed. Well, we have some play. Put the feeler gauges in there and see what the actual clearance is. Maybe this will be quick. Well, this set here only goes down to 5,000. This should be between 3 and 6. 5 is fitting, so that's not really a problem. And on the exhaust. Oh, that was, that was the exhaust, my mistake. So six is fitting there on the exhaust. Five is not fitting on on the intake valve. Let me see if my other set gets a little smaller. So this is a three thousandth here for the intake. It's in there, but it's really tight. But it does fit. I think we're going to leave both of them the way they are. Because after I changed that coil and changed the spark plug, it really did seem to run better. I would have liked to get a tap and clean up the threads for the spark plug, but I didn't get a chance to do that. And uh, this is my last day with this. I just wanted to do a follow-up video before this leaves. Because the other video was titled Part 1. This one's going to be Part 2. Somebody went a little crazy, a little overboard with this sealer. It really doesn't need this much. Just needs a small bead. Get it off of here. Clean all these screws off. We got sealer on the heads and all the way down on the end. It's always a good idea if you put it so that the, the words are facing that way, the letters, so the, the V is facing up. The other two is a little hard to tell. But like that, the V doesn't look like anything. If you put it the correct way, then you get your, your model and your code and all that facing up so you can read it. For the next time you need to order parts, because that's the information you need off the engine. So after all that, I didn't actually adjust the valves because they were good the way they were. So that backfiring was not because of the valves. Unless the intake valve is cracked and leaking or something like that. But 
like I said, I started it up a few days after I did that other video. And it, it started up fine. It ran fairly smooth. It surged a little bit. But due to time constraints, I'm not going to get into the carburetor. Which looks like a new carburetor. So there's a good chance that the idle jet is just too small and needs to be drilled out. There could be a little piece of dirt somewhere restricting fuel flow. That's always a possibility. So I'm going to get the cover and put the cover back on. So this here is the cover that goes on top. And just for the sake of figuring, you know, checking, I took off the air filter cover, and this is how the filter was in there. This is a pre-filter. The air is supposed to go through here before it gets to your paper filter. Now, the way this works, the air goes up through here. It comes from the inside through the filter. So the filter should go like this. The screen goes against your paper. Then this goes in. This is your, your main filter. So the air comes through here this way. And then it goes down into there. So with the paper, with the pre-filter on this side, the pre-filter wasn't doing anything. It's supposed to keep big debris out of your paper filter. All these screws have to come back out. Some of these covers are slotted where the, the hole has a slot that you only have to loosen the screws. But this particular one, you have to take them all out. Now, over on this side, you have this heat shield, and this is supposed to clip onto this cover. There's a special prong up there that holds it in place. So right now, it's attached. It's right where it needs to go. And we'll check over there. That needs to be down over the carburetor. Now, you want to check over here. Make sure that it's down over the top of the carburetor all the way which it needed to go down just a little bit. On some models of this engine, there's actually a screw under here that has attaches to the carburetor, to the adapter on the end of the carburetor. And you need to take that screw out so you can get the cover off. See what happens. And now the choke works because we fixed that in the last video. So now it seems to be a pretty good running engine. So except for fixing the choke on the carburetor, I didn't touch the carburetor. I haven't done anything else to the carburetor. I changed the spark plug. I changed the coil. I really think that a lot of that shooting flames out and not running right was intermittent spark because I think it was arcing to the exhaust pipe because it got burned right there because it's so close to the exhaust pipe. 
So I'm going to call this a success. And uh, I got this because the engine wasn't running right, possibly had internal damage to the camshaft. It doesn't seem like that's what the problem is because now it seems to be running pretty good. But this has a new home. It's going to be leaving tomorrow. This is my last day with it, so I, I wanted to check the valves. And, you know, I, was, I would have bet that that exhaust valve was a little tight, not closing all the way. But that doesn't seem to be the case. It had the, it had the minimum of the specification of clearance, and uh, it, did, it wasn't popping or anything. It wasn't even surging. So maybe it's just a good day today for it. So this is the Husqvarna with the flames that come out of the carburetor. It's all back together. I got the hood back on it. And uh, this is my last day with it. It's going on to its new owner. The problem that this had, it may be unique to this small engine. It's a very uncommon engine for this size of a tractor. Even though it's only a 38 inch deck, a 13 and a half horsepower engine is, is pretty small. I know years ago when they came out with 38 inch decks, they were smaller than that, 10, 11 horsepower. But in the modern day with these rotting mowers, a 13 and a half, the only purpose of that is to keep the cost down. But like I said, I'll put a link at the end of the video that you can watch the other video and, and see what I see what I did on the last one. Some of the things I discovered that I mentioned here and how I really thought it was going to be the valves that were a problem, but they don't seem to be. So that's going to wrap this one up. Uh, you know, if you find this helpful or interesting, hit the like button. And, you know, if you can hit the subscribe button. That'll help get me, get me more views, move me up the list a little bit, and I can keep doing this.